Okay. Hello everyone. Welcome back to BB.net tutorials. Today we are talking about functions. This will be the first uh, tutorial about functions because the subject is a little bit uh, large and uh, requires more uh, explain more details. So let's see what functions are. Uh, you can think of functions as uh, small blocks that together could form your program. It's like uh, uh, like uh, the components of, of a car. Uh, yeah, uh, you, you, you put the components together to create a car. The same is true in programming. You create, a, you get a number of components. Each component does a, one specific uh, task and put them together to create a program. Uh, you can uh, think of functions as small blocks of code or mini programs. Each one of these programs is used to solve a simple problem or do a specific task. Usually, you can create a function that could do a number of tasks, but this will make things complicated for you. And uh, the program calls the function when needed. It, what I mean here is that whenever you need to do some specific operation, you just call its function at any time. Okay, so uh, they are very flexible. And uh, functions uh, is used by people because it makes your code easier to understand and makes programming easier. Okay, so let's see this simple example. Uh, let's see you are required to compute the factorial and for you who does not know what factorial is if you have number 4 it's factorial is 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 by 1 if you have number 10 it's 10 by 9 by 8 by 7 by 6 by 5 and so on okay so let's say you have three numbers and you want to compute their factorial okay here uh, you have this uh, this uh, initialization and here you have a for loop to compute the vectorial the same is here is true you have this uh, initialization and then it's vectorial and so on imagine if you have to compute the vectorial for, for 30 variable and in this case you will have to write this code 30 times uh, usually this is inconvenient uh, instead of that you use functions and when you use functions the code changes uh, whenever you want to compute the factorial you just write uh, get me the factorial of a get me the factorial of b get me the factorial of c it's as simple as that all you have to do is to define the factorial function okay and if you check the factorial function here actually it is computing the fact uh, this is the code we used in the previous slide to compute the factorial so it's a, uh, you write the code once and use it as many times as you need in your program whenever you need it okay now let's see this simple uh, uh, this simple representation of the program and uh, two functions and see how the program works when it calls uh, the functions here you have a number of steps then there's a function call a which is this one and then a number of steps then another function call f to b and number of steps then a function call to a again and so on uh, we will use a simple dot to represent where the program execution is here what you see is the program executed all these steps until it reached the uh, function call now when the computer finds this statement call on the function a it will transfer its execution into the function execute the content of the function to compute to solve the problem and return back to main program with the result after that it will continue execution until it gets the next function call it will transfer execution to the uh, function executed to solve your problem and uh, return the result back to the program and continue from the step he did uh, the program did the last jump and uh, when you have another function call it will jump again to the required function execute its code and jump back to the main program and so on 
So this is basically how a function works. Whenever, whenever there is a function called, the execution suspends, the program goes to the function executed and get the result back. Okay. Now let's see what type of functions do we have. We have built-in functions. And built-in functions are created by the companies who make the compiler. And, uh, and usually, uh, for example, when we say it's built-in function, it means if you are using the same compiler uh, on okay, uh, you you will always find these functions available because they're the uh, they are built-in. Okay, the, uh, they make your programming easier and you don't have to write their code. Okay, let's see two examples. One example is the POW, which computes the power. Here, this function will take uh, these two numbers. It will raise number 2 to power of 8, okay, uh, which gets you to 256. And the function is this one, which takes a string and converts it into the upper case, okay? Uh, so th these are two examples of built-in function. Another built-in function which I didn't write is the input box and the message box. Uh, okay. Now the second part which we are interested in is the user-defined functions, and these are the functions that you create to solve your issues or problems. Okay. Now let's take this simple example. Okay, you write the function and then a name, then the parameters with the data type and another data type. Let, uh, we will see what, what the, uh, this does. Okay, okay, so these are normal visual basic.net statements, except for the return, which we, we didn't see, and the function and function. So, when you are writing a function, you must specify the name. Here our function is called sum. Usually you will select a logic uh, a name that describes what your function do. If your function is used to find the average, you usually you will call it abg. If your function is, is to find the multiplication, you will call it mult. You can write, of course, choose any name like for example wxyz12345, but that will make things confusing for you because you won't remember what your function does. Uh, your function does. So uh, here is the name of your function. You must also specify parameters and here uh, parameters you can think of them as variables that have value when the function starts execute execution. Usually the, these parameters get their value from the main program. Okay. Uh, we will see exam uh, some examples of, of that. Okay, you must also specify the return type. Here, your function, uh, sh after solving the problem, it should return uh, a value, and this value's type is integer. Okay, and here we are returning the value with the return statement. Okay, so here your function will take two numbers from the main program. The first number is P1, the second number is P2. It will add these two numbers together and then the function will return the sum into your main program as simple as that. Okay, and usually this statement between function and that function are called the body of your function. Okay, so basically this is uh, the first part of the tutorial, the second part of the tutorial will be used to describe the function in more detail on, uh, using the, the developed application. So check out the second part of the tutorial and check out the website uh, and uh, kindly write and comment about this tutorial to improve it. Thank you and have a nice day.